Excuse me, madam. Just switch your engine off, please. Engine off. Oh, look at him. Winding people up. Look, Reg. Ah, you've just got a bit of a downer on him at the moment, that's all. It's been the same ever since that Michael Harris case. That's got nothing to do with it. I mean, what's he going to do today that's going to have the slightest effect on crime? Nice motor. Very nice. This is Sanders. I'm Detective Sergeant Bolton. This is Detective Constable Carver from Sunhill. About time. We got here as soon as we could, Mrs. Sanders. Well, it wasn't soon enough, was it? You better come in then. I could have done without this. I really could. Perhaps you could tell us what happened. You mean repeat what I've already told that uniformed officer? If you wouldn't mind, yes. I went out shopping at about 11.30. I came back at about 2 and I found that. Tamper proof, the salesman said. But then I suppose he would, wouldn't he? Yeah, I suppose he would. Did anyone know you were going out? I'd phoned the radio station and asked them to broadcast it like I usually do. What do you think? What's been stolen, then? A silver clock off the mantelpiece. And all my decent jewellery from upstairs. And before you ask, yes, I am insured. And no, I'm not making a fraudulent claim. We weren't suggesting you were, Mrs Sanders. Not yet you weren't. But I'm sure you'll slip it in somewhere. Have you any idea who's responsible for it? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Is it? Well, of course it is. They'll be drug addicts, won't they? Perhaps you'd like to show us upstairs, Mrs. Sanders, so we can see what else these drug addicts have been up to. Obviously, these weren't good enough for him. Have you had time to make up a list of jewellery yet, Mrs. Sanders? Yes. I've had nothing else to do. I'll be off, then. I've got another one to go to. Have you got anything? Another sausage. Well, what about downstairs? Nothing. As if I expected otherwise. I'll see myself out, Mrs. Sanders. We are doing our best here. Oh, is that what you call it? He's a very good examiner. If there's any forensic evidence, he would have found it. I'll tell you something. If you lot were to make better use of your resources, you wouldn't need to ask me all these questions and have all these people wandering around my house. Do you want us to catch them or not, Mrs. Sanders? Well, that's my whole point. Why aren't the police out there arresting burglars instead of harassing the motorist? Well, we all have our role to play. Actually, we catch a lot of criminals through spot checks. And I look like a criminal, do I? I'm sorry, Mrs. Sanders. I don't know what you're getting at. Well, if the police officer who stopped me today had been arresting drug addicts instead of checking my licence, there'd be one less out there feeding his dirty habit, wouldn't there? Which leads me to the question I'd like to ask. Which is what? Why did he stop me? Well, I'm afraid that's something you're going to have to take up with the officer concerned. How did I know you'd say that? You all stick together. Instead of doing what you're supposed to do in the first place, catch criminals. As opposed to standing around talking about them with you. Don't get facetious with me, young man. I'm not in the mood for it. And neither am I. I'd like to investigate your burglary. I'd like to catch the offenders. So perhaps we could get on with it and stick to the facts, eh? Here we go again. Yeah. What do you reckon? More ear ache? Probably. Oh. I'll tell you what, Jim, we're in the wrong job. I know what you mean. Still, look on the bright side. What's that? You haven't got anything worth stealing. Hello, I'm Detective Sergeant Bolton. This is Detective Constable Carver from Sun Hill. Are you Jill Andrews? Yeah, come in. Thank you. Oh, Rich, where you been? What's this place coming to? It's like Big Brother. All right, please yourself. I was only going to tell you that Sergeant Boyden's been looking for you. All right, thanks. Oh, sorry, by the way. Reg. Charles? I'll have a word. Charles. Where have you been? Oh, I had to nip out. 
I thought I told you to get that shoplifting file done. It's been kept in for court in the morning. You might have to see someone. I mean, what's work related? Make sure you get it finished. Um, I assume that's how they got in. Obviously made it easy for them. What, you didn't lock them then? No. Um, before you start scolding me, I know I should have known better, but I was only in work for the half day today, and you know how it is. Oh, I forgot. There's really no need to give yourself a hard time. What's done's done. Is she right about the door? Well, it would appear so. There's no sign of forced entry anywhere else. And as for the rest of it, before you ask, nothing at all so far. Well, I'll keep up the good work. Not looking promising, then. Well, it's early days yet. Did you have much taken? Yeah, things of sentimental value. A brooch my mother left me, a ring that belonged to my grandmother. I've always said I wouldn't care if someone took my TV and video because you can always get another one, but not my jewellery. We'll see what we can do anyway. Thanks. I'm sorry about this. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Thanks for being so nice to me. It's OK. Right, Jim. I think we'll be off now. You've been very kind. I know you don't have to be. It's all in the job description nowadays. Well, I wish that other policeman had read it then. I'll take no notice of him. He's just having a bad day. No, not him. The one that stopped me earlier. What was this? On my way to work, he just asked loads of questions. He wanted to know where I've been, where I was going, who I live with, you name it. I wouldn't mind so much, but I was only around the corner in Wellbank Road. But if I ever find out who it is, I'll certainly have a word with him. Would you? I'd appreciate that. I've got his number. Do you know him? Yes, I've got a feeling we do. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then what happened? Well, it turns out he's a manager of a local football team and they're doing terrible. So I give him the ticket and say, congratulations, here's your first three points uh, of the season. No, the <laughs> old ones are the best, I think. <laughs> yeah, Reg, yeah. you got a minute? Oh, uh, well, look, I know that CID time's precious at the moment, but, uh, well, can it wait? No, it can't. Outside. Uh. Reg is in demand today. Sir, what can I do for you? I was wondering if you'd be kind enough to tell me what you've been up to today. Well, I've been up to me eyes in paperwork, and I had a remand filed at needs doing. That's funny, because I saw you out and about in Maybury Drive earlier on, getting a bit irate with that woman. Yeah, well, I did have to nip it out. So why? Perhaps you would have been better off staying in and finishing that file, and that way, when you did go out, you would have been in a better frame of mind and not under quite so much pressure. No, so I'd say it's not always as easy as that in uniform. We're not always in the position where we can just pick and choose when we go out. Yeah, but then you would have been able to speak to people in an altogether more becoming manner, wouldn't you, Reg? I'm not sure I get your trips. There are people out there who deserve all the crap you can give them. We both know that. But you've been in the job long enough to know that those people aren't nice women in tidy motors. Do you understand? Well, yeah, but look, there was only one, right? And I mean, she was the one with the attitude, not me. Really? Really? All I did was ask her to put her seatbelt on and she, uh, <coughs> she called me a fascist. What about Jill Andrews? Who? Uh -huh. Just bear it in mind, eh? Yeah, Sarge, I'm not very happy about this. If someone's making a complaint against me, then they should do it through the proper channels. Don't push your luck, Reg. How long have you known Reg? Years. Why? Reg reckons he's never heard of Jill Andrews. So? I don't believe him. There was something about him, something evasive. You know Reg. Do I? I tell you, Jim, something's not right. Think about it. Two single women, both have nice cars, both get stopped by a police officer and both go home to find that their houses have been screwed. It's a coincidence. Is it? There's a mate of mine in Liverpool told me about one of his relief who was working in conjunction with one of their scrotes. What he'd do is he'd find out when people weren't in their homes, he'd phone this lad, this lad would go round and burgle their houses. They like that where you're from. So what are you trying to say? Think about it. What, the wretches behind these burglaries? Oh, look. It could have been a bogus police officer who stopped him for all we know. Yeah, could have been, except we've got Reg's number. And we saw him around the corner, after all, giving some woman a hard time, if you remember. I think that's going too far. All I saw was a bit of finger wagging. Well, I know what I saw. Is 
Sons. Uh, can I have a word with you? What's up? Well, I was in the canteen just now and Dias Bolton came up to me asking me all sorts of questions. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he wanted to know what I've been doing today. Why? Well, that's what I wanted. He seemed to think that I'd been rude to some motorists earlier on. And were you? Well, I did have a few words with one lady, but so that was all, and she started it. And then I was doing my file. And where were you before that, when you had to nip out? Well, like I said, I went to see someone. Who? An informant. I thought with my experience, I might be able to glean some useful information. Are they registered? Not yet, no, but I'm working on that. And, uh, well, I knew she wouldn't talk to anyone else. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I knew you wanted the file doing, and I didn't think the talk to the informant would take very long. Well, I hope it was worth it. Well, it's early days, yeah. And do you want me to talk to D.S. Bolton? I have heard there has been some tension between you. Well, it, it might be an idea. Now, if you don't mind, put my side of the story. As long as that's not what it is. A story. Wait. Matthew, I was just coming to find you. That's funny. I was just coming to find you. Jim, will you do us a favour? We need a word in private. It's about Reg. I oh, know I've just been speaking to him. He says you've been having a go at him. Again. I just wanted to find out what he's been up to today. Well, I would have thought that was my business. The thing is, Matthew, I've attended two burglaries today. And on both occasions, both victims were stopped by a police officer beforehand. Get to the point. One of them took Reg's number. So? What's the problem? Something wrong with his attitude? Or is he a suspect? That was a joke. It's something I'm looking into. I'm not having this conversation. What? You heard. Matthew, I think you're overreacting a bit. Do you? There's nothing you wouldn't stoop to to get at Ridge. It's not like that. It's exactly like that. All right, then, if that's your attitude. It is. Jim, come on, we're going. Ridge, office. I need to ask you something, Jim. What's that? What were you and Reg talking about? Nothing, really. You didn't mention what we discussed earlier? I just asked him what he'd been up to. Look, me and Reg are in uniform together. I know he might seem a bit odd sometimes, but he is all right. I just wanted to get a bit of a clearer picture. Just remember where your loyalty lies, OK, Jim? Mrs Sanders, sorry to bother you again. We need to ask you a couple of questions. We've had some complaints about a police officer today. So this isn't even about my burglary, then? Well, as well as investigating your burglary, I intend speaking to the police officer, so perhaps you could answer a few questions about him? Go on, then. Get on with it. I don't suppose you took his number by any chance? Nope. Well, perhaps you could start by telling us what he looked like. Uh, tall, slim. Did you notice what colour his hair was? Dark, as far as I could make out. And did you notice anything distinctive about his features? Uh, in your own time, Mrs Sanders. Yes. Come to think of it, his nose. It was... Prominent. Uh, yes. As good a word as any. And what exactly was it about his attitude that you didn't like? It wasn't what he said. It was the way that he said it. And he was so nosy. Like you. Well, as you're so interested in this policeman, there is something I haven't mentioned. What's that? I was so angry by the way he spoke to me that I, uh, I asked his name. It was P.C. Edrich. Edrich? Edrich. Well, why didn't you tell us this before? You didn't ask. Who's P.C. Edrich when he's at home? Don't know. Do you think he really exists, or is he bogus? Well, it depends on whether Miss Andrews got his number right or whether he gave his real name. Sierra Oscar from D.S. Bolton. Go ahead, Sarge. Yeah, Jamila, could you do us a favour? Make a few phone calls for me and find out if we've got a P.C. Edrich anywhere. In Sun Hill? No, the Met. It's in connection with the burglaries in the Maybury Drive area. We may have a bogus policeman on our hands, or a policeman using a false name. Right, I'm not going to hang about. There's been another burglary, and it fits the pattern of the other two. And the good news is it's happened within the last hour, which means our man might still be about. Now, this is what we've got. 
Three burglaries in the Maybury Drive Silver Dean Way area. Three victims, all female. All had expensive cars and all were stopped by a PC Edrich near their homes a short time before. Now, I don't know about you, but in my book, that's a lot more than a coincidence. So what it would appear our man does is he stops these women, he finds out where they live, he finds out how long they're going to be away from home, then bingo, he's around their house doing the business. Now, if I'm right, and the man responsible for doing these jobs is wearing the cloth. I cannot stress too much how badly we need to catch him. Do we know what he looks like, Sergeant? Reg Hollis, apparently. It would appear, for whatever reason, that Reg's number is being used, which is all the more reason for us to get him, and to get him quickly before he embarrasses us any more. Uh, yeah, but you don't really think it's Reg's idea, Sergeant. What we're going to do is set up our PC at Reg. I've pinpointed the areas he's already hit. We're going to use Liz as our bait. Thanks, Sarge. Don't mention it, Liz. I want you to drive an unmarked car in the Keeley Street, Wellbank Road area. That's not going to be a Porsche, but it's just going to have to do. Right. I've been in touch with the mate who's an estate agent. He's going to let us use an unoccupied house. Yeah, so Liz, you better make a note of this, because if he does stop you, this is going to be your new address. It's number one, Maybury Drive. Now, Jim and I are going to be waiting there for him in case he does show up. Now, so far, this PC Edrich has been very clever. We haven't got any forensic evidence, so this is going to be our only chance of catching him. Well, seems a bit of a long shot, if you ask me. Have you got a better idea, Don? Arrest Ridge. DS Borton from WDC Rawton. Go ahead, Liz. I've done all Keeley Street and the Wellbank Road area. Negative so far. Go around again, then. Received. DS Beach from DS Bolton. Yeah, go ahead, John. Make sure you don't lose her, Don. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I won't lose her. Look. There he is. I told you he'd still be out, didn't I, Jim? Don't be down. That's George. I can see that. I'm beginning to think Reg is haunting me. Yes? Not too late, am I? No. Oh. See so you've left your truncheon at the station then, Sarge. Oh. I don't mean to be rude, Sarge, but do you honestly think that this is going to work? Let's just give it a chance, eh? Oh. It's not your day, is it? Are you sure they've given us the right key? Do you want me to have a go? <sighs> oh, it's easy when you know how. Oh, it is beautiful. Yes. I, I, I thought you'd like it. Yeah. Yes, well, it's just as well I got here when I did, really. Yes, there's, there's been a lot of interest. Well, look, um, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Mm. If you want anything else, just let me know. I'll do that. Excuse me, officer. I'd like to speak to one of your superiors. I think you're right, Jim. What about? About it not being my day. He's not going to come, is he? Who? Reg. I was driving along Gateside Road, and one of your colleagues stopped me and started giving me a hard time about my driving. And I still don't know exactly what it is I'm supposed to have done. You didn't have to get his name and number, did you? No, I didn't. Now, where's the police station? What did he ask her? What? Well, did he ask you where you were going? Yes. And where you'd been? Yes, you know, the usual questions. Why? Did he ask you where you live and who with? Yes. Did he ask you your address? Yes, he did. And what is it? 36 Bramwell Road. Look, do you mind telling me what's going on? Just a moment, I've got to speak to someone. DS Bolton from 171. Go ahead, Reg. Yes, yeah, Sergeant, I've got to miss Richards with me. She's just been stopped in Gateside Road in her discovery by a police officer. Sounds like your man. Did she get his name or number? No, Sergeant. Received! Get her address! Over! Yeah, I've done that already, Sergeant. 36 Brownwell Road. 
Okay, you check Gateside Road with the witness in case he's still there. We're gonna go straight over to her place. Don't let's back us up. All available units do likewise. Come on, Jim, get a move on! All right. Look, there's nothing for you to worry about, okay? I just want you to take me back to where it happened, see if you can identify the policeman. Well, it's a bit late now. It was only a minute ago. We'll go there just in case, okay? If we don't have any luck, I'll see you home all right. Okay. Could all just be a ploy, you know? Reg, create you one of his famous elaborate diversions. Very funny. I hope you know where you're going. Shortcut. Well, it was just here. Dearest Bolton from 171. Go ahead, Reg. Yes, yeah, Sarge, I've checked the Gateside Road area. There's still no sign. Received. Well, we know what that means, don't we? Okay, Reg, back us up and Miss Richard's house. Thanks, sir. Right, slow down. This is the road. What was the number again? 36. All right. By 40, 38. All right, it's that one. Sarge, look at this. like he was using Reggie's number after all. Perhaps someone else has got it in for him as well. All right, you take the bike. Sarge. Sierra Oscar from DS Bolton. Go ahead, Sarge. We're at the address of Bramall Road. It looks like he's beaten us too. We're going to go in. Are you ready? He must still be in the house. Check the bath. I'll take upstairs. Jim! He's outside! Police! You don't go anywhere, pal. I'll give you a hat. No, just wait here. Hey! Come on, I think you've done enough damage, don't you? <laughs> right. I'm arresting you for burglary. Okay? Oh, and assaulting my colleague here. Come on, out. Out! You don't have to say anything unless you wish to do so, but it may arm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. You're right, Don. You say yeah. Do you understand? And I was on a promise tonight. Yeah. Well, I think you look lovely, Sarge. So, not bad oh. for a long shot, eh? Yeah, yeah. All right. Well done, Reg. Yeah, well, not bad, eh, Sarge? For a suspect. Not bad at all. All right, if you've got something to say, just say it. Get it off your chest. No, I wouldn't waste my breath. <laughs>